Hey everybody, Mike here. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about Ansible. You might have heard the name thrown around in various circles within the IT community, and maybe you have no clue what it is. In this video, we're gonna just talk about the very, very basics. What is it? What could you use it for? And I'm even gonna show you guys a very, very brief demo of what Ansible can do. So without further ado, let's jump in. But before we do that, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe if you're not subscribed for other videos just like this. So let's get into it. So what is Ansible? Ansible is a cross-platform automation tool that you can do some really interesting things. So for example, one of those is application deployment. We can use Ansible to push complete applications into our environment and automate all of the pieces of that application. We can also do things like deploy software packages on existing servers, which is actually what I'm gonna show you in the demo here in a minute. And we can do other things like configuration management. Configuration management is actually one of my favorite use cases for Ansible. So in normal environments, one of the biggest challenges is configuration drift or you know uneven configurations we have this server set up this way this server set up that way maybe you know things are just inconsistent throughout the environment that presents a lot of problems think about it from a security standpoint maybe we have telnet in, enabled on you know a, a vm that we shouldn't have it enabled on we have ssh on these vms we have kind of inconsistencies there maybe we have certain ports open here that shouldn't be open that sort of thing what if we have different versions of software packages installed across our servers, right? So think about, again, security vulnerabilities. Maybe a vulnerability comes out and now it affects some of our environment, but not all of it. Wouldn't it be nice if we had a way that we could hit a button or hit enter and automate this so that we made sure all of the packages were the same way across the environment? So that's one use case. That's a big one. I like that one a lot. Another one is orchestration. This kind of goes hand in hand with application deployment. But Ansible is really good at reaching out and touching different types of uh, pl platforms ultimately. So a virtual machine, bare metal, et cetera. So we're gonna be talking about that, but orchestration is a big one. So it's not just about automating one piece of your environment, it's about multiple pieces. Finally, one thing that kind of ties into a couple of these other use cases, but I just wanted to use this as an example, is that Ansible is really good if we wanna do things like update our servers. So one of the things you can do in Ansible is kind of create groups within Ansible, you can say, these are my test servers, these are my dev servers, these are my prod servers, and we can push updates to each group of those servers, which is really cool. So there's a lot of really cool use cases for doing this sort of thing. All right, so moving on. So Ansible allows us to do all of these different interesting use cases, and it does that by being able to automate almost anything, not quite everything, but a lot of things. Those can include things like Linux servers. That can be Windows servers, it can be bare metal or VMs or even public cloud. So we can automate an EC2 instance in AWS, for example. We can also do network devices. So load balancers, firewalls, switches, routers, you name it, it's probably able to be automated with Ansible. And then finally, we, we can do automation of software defined networking, in this case, NSXT by VMware. So this is really interesting. This is the use case I care about more than anything else. So this is the one we will be getting into in other videos and I'll be showing you how it looks to automate NSXT. But suffice to say, there's some really interesting use cases. Think about configuration management for NSXT. Wouldn't it be nice if I could define all of my policies for my firewall in Ansible and keep it in a source code repository and make sure that I have version control and that sort of thing. So that way, if my environment deviates from that, from that baseline, then I can have Ansible set it back to the way it should be, for example. Or I can use Ansible to automate multiple tenant deployments and that sort of thing. So the sky is really the limit. You can do all kinds of things with Ansible and NSXT, which again, we'll be getting into that. One of the things I wanna add is that all of this is done without any agents. Ansible ultimately uses just a regular SSH connection into whatever platform it's managing. So if it's a router, it's SSH. If it's a VM, it's SSH. You kind of get the point there. So that's really nice. We don't have to install anything at all on the managed devices that are in our inventory within Ansible. Now we do have to have one component installed, which I'm gonna show you here. So let me flip slides and we'll get into this. So let's start with this example right here. So we have in Ansible what's called an Ansible control node. This is really just a fancy way of saying this is something that does have Ansible installed on it. This could be, for example, a Mac laptop, a new Ubuntu VM, um, a Debian VM, whatever the case is. This would not be a Windows system. This would be something running Linux or a variation of Linux that we have installed Ansible on. 
Now in our example, we have a couple of VMs. We have Web01A, which is a VM. We also have Web03A, which is a VM. And we have Web02A, which is a bare metal server, just for the sake of argument. Now, let's say we go into our Ansible control node. And in my case, by the way, I have an Ubuntu VM that I'm using for this. And let's say we go, okay, I wanna go ahead and write what's called a playbook, which defines a list of tasks. And these tasks in this case will be things like install the Apache web server and go ahead and configure Apache for me exactly how I want it. Now, normally the way we would do this is, well, you guessed it, we would SSH into each individual server. Maybe we come up with a little script and we just copy and paste it into the SSH session. Well, with Ansible, we don't have to worry about that. We define it once in that playbook and then we can do this. We push it out to all of those servers and we are done. Ansible will automate deploying Apache and doing all the configuration just as we told it to. And again, the best part is it's repeatable. If we push that to our test servers, for example, and we decide a week later, let's do it to our dev or prod servers, for example, we can just rerun that and just target it to a different group essentially within our environment. But as I said earlier, not all environments are just VMs. We also have network devices to think about. So let's say we had a bunch of Cisco switches and now we say, you know what? I wanna apply a login banner to all of my switches. I have 300 switches and boy, that would take a long time to go one by one to do that. So with Ansible, we can go ahead and define that again on the control node right here in a playbook and bam, we can push that down to all of our Cisco switches if we wanted to. All right, so let's get into our actual demo. So this is what I'm gonna be showing you. So I have my Ansible control node, which is again, I'm using an Ubuntu VM for this. This is separate from these two, by the way. And then I have a couple of test VMs, Ubuntu VM 01 and 02. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a playbook that I wrote, it's just a YAML file, which stands for yet another markup language. And the syntax is really simple. So eventually what I'm gonna do is basically just say, I wanna install Nmap on all of my Ubuntu VMs. So I just wanna define it once and push it. Now in this case, there's only two VMs, so you can definitely argue that you know we're not saving a whole lot of time, but you should get the concept that if we had 100 VMs, we'd be saving a whole lot of time. So that said, let's get into it. We're gonna define that, we're gonna push that software, and we're gonna make sure it's installed on those VMs. So let's switch over to the lab and get right into it. 